Greetings hobbyists, this is Arthans of Vool, and in this video we're going to make a sci-fi ball turret. So this seemed like a good project to show, people have been asking for some workflow videos, and while this could be used for a ball turret if you've seen anything like Oblivion, great film by the way, an even better soundtrack, you could use this for something like a drone or something similar. So before I start on this I should probably say I haven't actually pre-designed this, and I'm one of those horrible people that doesn't like to sketch things out before I go. I know what I'm sort of basing this on and I've got some general ideas of how I want this to be but I like to sketch on my 3D model. I change things a lot, I make lots of little saves and then go back to earlier versions so this is probably going to be a little bit meandering, I'm going to be perfectly honest about that. So if you want something that's some really tight fixed tutorial to make some end result this is not going to be it and you might want to just back away from this tutorial and go and find something else. So I'm going to start by bringing in a UV sphere. Now I don't want a quad sphere, I want a UV sphere because it's got these edges that are going to be parallel to the shapes that we want for a lot of this. So it's just going to make it easier. The normal problem with the UV sphere is it has this point at the top which we really don't like but we're going to be able to get away with that really easily. So I'm just going to come in here and let's just up this to let's say 64. That should be detailed enough. We can always do something to add some detail later if you want to. And then I'm going to R and rotate it 90 degrees. That means that we've now got these points on the side and we're going to actually delete a little bit out of this. Now let's fix the size of this, which I've just realized I've forgotten to do. Or we can delete the edges out first. Let's do that. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, shift and Z to get into X-ray mode. And I'm going to get rid of, let's say, to about there, I think. So let's delete those vertices come out of x-ray mode, alt click to select all of that and then F to fill that in. Then I'm going to add a bit of detailing I think, so face mode and then let's I to inset that, E to extrude it out a little bit. I'm just going to do that a couple of times to just add that detailing that you want so that you don't have these boring surfaces. Okay, we'll stick with that for now and then I'm going to alt and X and then symmetrize that across to the other side. Right, let's start dealing with size then. So N to bring out the M panel item, and I want this to be on the X and Y. Now actually it might be easier just to visualize this if I control an A and apply the rotation at this point, otherwise it looks a little bit odd. So along the Y and the Z axis, I want this to be 30. And then this looks ridiculous, so let's widen that out until it looks about right. But I don't want this to be perfectly spherical. I want something about there so it looks like a person could fit inside it and while it is called a ball turret it doesn't want to be exactly a ball like if I put that 30 or down a little bit so that it looks like it's cut off it just doesn't quite look right so something about there might be a little bit more interesting so it doesn't look like it would be a perfect sphere so I'm just gonna up that to 25 to make sure that I've got some nice easily rounded figures if I want to do something later with adding bits in right so what do we want to do now let's start dealing with this looks almost too rounded and you're going to need a door to get into it so we're actually going to do a similar thing so i'm going to go into vertex mode again select some vertices and i'm going to get rid of the sort of middle bit to make it a little bit flatter to make it look more like a door so maybe not those so let's go yeah about here and then as well i'm just going to delete out those vertices alt and x to the other side and then alt click alt click and then go to Control e for edge and bridge edge loops and now i've got something that looks a little bit more like that that's quite interesting then let's go into edge mode again shift and r there control and b just using a bevel to sort of split this out and then i'm going to q and alt on ear macro to bring that out a little bit more yeah i think there and then let's alt click there and alt click there and we're going to s and x and we only want that coming in on the x so something about there yeah that looks interesting now I'm trying to do this so that we've got some weapons that I'm adding to this and I've got some weapons in mind. I want these sort of long range laser guns and I've actually already made those previously. So I'm going to bring those in now so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to go to my asset browser. Let's go in, bring in my blender assets and I'm going to bring in that long lens which is there. So this is what weapon's going to be going on it. I haven't actually got a video of making this but it's relatively simple in terms of its shape. If you want something similar to this, there's a video in the description of me making a laser gun so you can have a look at that and that focuses on the use of box cutter. It's RZ180, R and then 90 minus and then let's sort of get that in place. So it's going to be somewhere around here and I think we're going to need to go into face mode, select that face and then extrude that back a little bit so we've got a little bit more 
length to it. And I think that's probably going to look about right. It's G and Y or G and X that across even to maybe about there. And then let's Alt X and mirror that across. Yeah, I think that's going to look pretty nice. So obviously we're going to need some place for the weapons to be mounted. So obviously we'll need to bring these into the ball turret somehow, but I think that should look fairly good. Let's go with that for now. Right, we need a door next. Some way for the person to get in and out. I'm not sure if they'd actually get in from the front, but it seems like you wouldn't be able to access this from the rear. You'd basically be trapped in it in a similar way to those people were in World War II. So let's sort that out. Right, so I'm just going to shift A mesh and then let's bring in a cube. Let's S to scale that up. I think I want the door going wider than this sort of section there. G and Z that up. And then let's G and then bring that forward. Let's scale it on the wax. It's a bit so it goes far enough back. I think somewhere around there. And then let's go into edge mode. Select that edge, that edge. Control and B. I think somewhere there would look quite good. No, maybe not. Let's make that bigger. Let's go to about there. And then I'm going to come into face mode and then extrude that down. So we've got some nice interactions with the other shapes. Let's go to about there. Yeah, I think that'll look about right. So at this point, that's going to be really close to that edge. Let's S and X that just a tiny bit so we have less problems. But I imagine we're going to get a problem anyway. We'll talk through that as we go. Let's control an A and apply the scale. Let's make sure well, we control an A and apply the scale here as well. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. And then I'm going to select this, shift select this, and I'm going to come into this just panels add on. So you can do this in other ways, but just panels makes this simple to do. I'm going to click make 3D panel, and we've got our 3D panel here. And it hasn't actually bugged out in any way, shape, or form. Now, this is likely to have some problems at points because what we've got is a quite complex mesh, and if this overlaps too much it will not like it mostly because on these bits here we've got these rounded corners so if you want to fix this what will possibly happen is you won't even be able to see this object so just come down puts it nicely into this just panels section and then you can just come here where it's got the bevel size inside and out if we put that to zero it's going to make these nice and sharp and that normally solves almost all of the problems i ever find and i'm just going to change that gap inside to make it a little bit bigger let's go to about there and then i don't think that's deep enough so let's change the panel depth there let's go to about there i think that's going to look better Right, so that's going to be our door. Let's H to hide that. So that's just panels. Really, really nice to use. And it's got this 3D printable section, which means that we don't have any issues here. If you try to use something like an inset from Hard Ops and Box Cutter, that will probably have issues with this because it'll actually not create a 3D object. It will create two totally separate objects. And you can have a look at that on the video on just panels if you'd like. There's a link to that in the description as well. So yeah, I think we're pretty good for this at the moment. Let's deal with some sort of viewport here. So once again, I'm going to bring in a cube. S to scale that up. G and Z. Think to about there. Looks about right. Let's G and Y that forward. And I'm just going to go into edges. So I'm just going to select the edges. And I think we're going to round these. So Control and B. And then let's move up to about there. Let's go for eight segments. And then I'm going to use that to Q. And I'm going to boolean and knife this. So let's H to hide that. And then we can go into vertex mode and we'll see we've got those there. So what I actually want is face mode. And then I'm going to E to extrude. But I want this only along the Y axis. So it's facing forward just like that. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that should look pretty good. No, maybe that's too small. Let's just go back a bit. So let's actually just scale that up a bit. I think somewhere to about there. G and Z that. There. And then actually, I think I want those down a little bit there. Yeah, happier with that. Right, let's do that again. So Boolean and then knife. Hide that. And then go into face mode here. And then let's just E and then Y that forward a little bit. So somewhere about there. So, yeah, pretty happy with that. And then we need a viewing slit. So let's go back to this cube that we can't see. Let's S that down. So we've got somewhere about there. And then vertex, let's G and Z. 
So you'll notice that I'm doing this in vertex mode so I'm not affecting the bevels. If I did this in object mode and then S and then Z, it will make that curve bevel look really, really weird. We don't want that. So let's G and then Z that up. Ooh, wrong key. Somewhere about there, I think. Yep. And then I don't think I'll do that high. So let's G and Z that down. And then I'm pretty happy with that. But we do want this front being flat. So I'm just going to G and Y that back to about there. And then I'm actually going to control and plus that to union it. So let's change that to exact because it's a better solver. And that should look about right. Now I've got some choices here. What I could do is come into this object I to inset it and then E to extrude it back. But we're going to have a problem that we're going to get this edge here, which is the part behind it. So what I'm going to do instead is actually H and then I'm going to apply that and then we can start doing things with this object. So quick power save before I do anything because we like to save things before we're going to make some permanent changes and then I'm just going to come to my modifier panel and complete this boolean here. Not the first one which is our panel line just in case we decide we want to change that for some reason so let's apply that. That means now I can go to face mode I to inset that and let's E to bring that back and we've got that looking much better. So somewhere like there, I think that might need to be a little bit wider. That's I to insert that a little bit more and E to extrude that back. Yeah, that looks much better. Now, because this is going to be sort of painted like it's some sort of armor, maybe something a bit plasticky, but this bit at the front is going to be a different metal, I want to change how some of these sections look. So I'm just gonna go into edge mode Let's select that. So I've actually used loop select for that, which is something for machine tools. It means that I can click and then press alt click and it's going to select that perfectly. If you don't have that, you're probably going to need to do it by hand. Let's control and B and bevel that out a bit so it's a little bit rounded. I'm going to do the same thing there. And we're going to do the same thing here as well. just because hopefully that's gonna make this texture look a little bit different to the hard edges that we've got elsewhere. And importantly, it's gonna look different to the hard edge there where it's been joined onto it. Now, this is the point where it's starting to feel like I need a little bit more detailing. And I think the easiest way to start with that is just to add in some things like some rivets, which we're gonna be using anyway. So let's bring in a quad sphere. I want the dimensions of these to be about 0.8 millimeters. And then I can just move that over to about here. Let's sort of get that in place to about there. Check that we're happy with the alignment of it. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna select Alt X and then mirror that across to this other side. And I can just Shift and D and duplicate that. And that will also be mirrored as well. So yeah, that looks probably about right. I don't think I need more than that in rivets. And then we're gonna put some in this section here where we've got these bits bolted on once again shift and a and then a quad sphere change that to let's say something a bit bigger so let's say 1.5 in terms of size and then q mesh tools and then radial array and then x change the angle of that and how many do i want yeah maybe eight nine let's go with 10 actually i think that looks interesting so i'm actually thinking that this looks a bit too big here this 1.5 so the problem with this is now we can have a look at the dimensions here i can't just change this to 1.5 because it's looking at everything you can really quickly get around that if you just get rid of that so you haven't got the radial array now it just has the basic size so i could change this to let's say one and then bring that back in and I'm just going to need to up the scale of that or the strength to bring those to the correct place. So yeah, happy with that. G and then Y or X, even that out to about there. And I might even up that strength just a little bit more so they're towards the outside edge. Yeah, I think I like that. In fact, what I'm going to do is Shift and D and make a duplicate of that. Bring that down a little bit more and then leave those there. Or do I want to... Let's just try this out. So I'm gonna apply that and then let's just R that round and have something so they're halfway in between. That looks quite interesting. So let's do that correctly. So what I'm gonna do is R, rotate it around and then for the angle, I know that I've got 10 pieces here. So I want it halfway between. So I'm gonna do 360 divided by 20 and then we've got that perfectly halfway in between. Right, yeah, happy with that. 
So now I'm liking the look of those. Let's alt X those onto the other side. So we've got them on both sides. I think we're going to need some detailing here possibly, but this is where this is going to attach and be able to rotate around. So there's going to be the attachment point for this central section, this face here. So I don't want to go into too much detail for that now. Finally, I think we need a targeting array or something for the front of this. Well, obviously the gunner can see out this small slit. That's not going to be particularly useful. So we want some sensors in the center. And thinking about it, it could be quite cool if actually this whole weapons section can be sort of taken in and out of this ball turret so they could maybe swap different weapons out. So that could be quite a fun idea. So what I want to do is actually remove a section of this front and then make the weapon portion. So let's think how I want to do that. What I'm probably going to need to do is copy some of this part of the weapon to copy this exact shape. Though actually we've got the origin in the right place so I can probably deal with that another way. So let's go into front view, shift and A, mesh, and then let's bring in a cylinder. We've got that, let's go to one, two, eight for the amount of edges on it. R, X, 90, so it's facing us. Then I'm going to shift select that, alt and A, and that's going to bring it to where this gun is. Let's not copy the rotation because we want our own rotation. You can see it in the middle there, and it's copied everything else in terms of its location. So we've got that just there. Basically, it's taken it to the origin of this. That uses machine tools, so that it is free. Then we can S and scale that up. Let's G and then Y that back a bit. And we just want this being a little bit bigger than that section. So somewhere around there, I think. Then I'm going to go into vertex mode, select all of those verts, G and Z those down to cover the lower portion. Let's go to about there. And then I'm going to do the same thing, G and X. And as long as it's across the halfway point, I don't really mind because, because what I'm going to do is mirror this and I'm going to mirror it across the cursor. So if I do that now, it looks exactly right. And then let's S and then Y and go to about there, I think. And let's control and minus that out. H to hide that. Yeah, that'll do. And so I can do something with this shape towards the rear. What I'm going to do is select this, Q, bring up hard ops, mesh tools, and then face extract. I want this face and this face there. Click, drag in slightly. And I want to extrude this out somewhere to probably about here. And let's make it so that we are adding to this. So I need to press A to make it a union. And we've got that there. Is that about right? Mm. Now looking at that, this feels a little bit wide to have for the entirety of this. Yeah, maybe actually I don't like that as much as I thought I would. So now this is the really brilliant thing about non-destructive modeling is that at the moment all of this is just booleans that haven't been applied. So actually I can get rid of that and I can even get rid of that if I don't like it as well. Though thinking about it, what I might do is Q and then ever scroll that back and just fix this and the bits that I don't like. Yeah, let's try and mirror some of the shapes that we've got going on here because we've got these nice 45 degree cuts coming in here with the door section. So let's go into edge mode. I'm going to press K and let's start probably about, let's say here, knife down, let's Z to make that vertically down there. C to go all the way through, click and then enter. So we've got that there, then I can go into vertex mode, select all of these vertices that aren't really doing anything. And let's just S and Z those in. So we get that going on. Hmm. And no, let's widen that out a little bit. So let's knife again. There, Z, C and click enter. And then we can just fiddle around with this a bit more. So once again, vertices, select all those vertices, S and Z. So we can do somewhere there-ish. And then we can G and X those to about there. Let's have a look at that. Okay, yeah, that might be a little bit more interesting to play around with, I think. So for that point, we could do exactly the same thing again. Q, mesh tools, and then face extract. And I'm just going to select those faces there. This does turn them slightly red, but because of the matte cap, it's a little bit difficult to see. You should be able to see it there. And then space, drag that in a little bit. Space again, pull that out to the front, and then A, 
Yeah, and I think that looks way more interesting than what we had. So let's go with that. So now we're going to need some detailing. So we want our targeting array in the center. Let's just shift an A mesh and bring in a cube. Let's bring that to around the right point, somewhere about there. Let's scale that up on the X axis, scale that up on the Z axis, bring that down a little bit, maybe there. Let's apply the scale, let's bevel those in. So we've got something a little bit more rounded. And then what I'm actually going to do is go into face mode, select there, let's select all of those, Q, and then shift click on curve extract, which will make this section there. And then we've got by H that, we've got our sort of armored section, which is going to protect our targeting sensors from any sort of impacts. Let's actually bring that forward a little bit so they stick out a little bit further. And then we can start putting in our targeting array. This is going to need to be a little bit thicker. Then I'll just scale it down slightly just in terms of making sure it's going to 3D print well. And then my normal way of making targeting lenses is to bring in a sphere R, Y and or X and then 90. Bring that to approximately the right place. So let's go with there. In fact, let's scale this up a bit so it's a bit bigger. So I have one larger one there. Try and match that a little bit to the size of the bevel. And then let's face I. To inset that, E to extrude it back, I to inset it again, E to extrude it, control and B to round it, and then I just S and then Y to flatten that a little bit, and then G and Y and bring it back to the correct place. So that's my quick way of making targeting lenses. Then I'm just going to shift to D and we'll make maybe a pair of those. No, let's just do something interesting, have something, have a larger one there, and then an array of two on that side. In fact, let's maybe scale that up a bit and then bring that to there. So that should look pretty good. Now, if you want this to be a little bit more interesting, oh, I've just noticed these are just free floating in midair. Let's actually go into face mode for all of those, select those back faces, bring that back. Maybe they're sticking out a little bit too much. Mm, we'll have a look. So what I'm gonna do is come to this Apply that quickly, control and A and apply the scale, go into edge mode, let's select that edge, that edge, no, just those two, control and B to give that a bit more of an angle to it, makes it look a little bit more interesting, and then if we want to, we could, I think, come into these two, let's control and R, there. So I'm not quite sure what happened here, but my voiceover mic seems to have died for a little bit of this. It's only until I realised I'm only doing some little details, but effectively all I'm doing is pulling out some faces here and then using the edges and just moving them up and down to create these little bits of details that you can see going on here. It's just a really nice way of adding a little bit of interest. To be honest, most of the time you're not going to see it unless you're really looking up close, but these little supports just add that nice extra bit of detail and having some little extra angles always makes a piece look a little bit more interesting. So that gives us our targeting array. So you can see how we just add these little details on here. We could add a few more here as well. The one thing we don't want to do is just add in too many details so it's flooded and you don't know where to look. That's always a problem people seem to hit on or get when they're 3D modeling is they just start putting details in every single section of the model. And then as soon as you do that, you've just got nowhere to look and you've got no flat spaces for nice transitions when you're painting and things like that. So looking at this now, I'm not sure I actually like these sharp corners here. I really like these match this edge there to that edge there, but this looks a bit too extreme, especially with the rounded other sections. So let's make sure that that aesthetic matches. And again, being non-destructive, we can fix this. So let's Q ever scroll and go to this, which is cutting out that section. Let's go into edge mode, select there, there. And then I think we want the ones at the bottom as well. Control and B, and let's round that off. I think somewhere around there should look around right. Let's H tie that. Yeah, happy with that. But now we're gonna have to do the same for this middle portion or this bit that is creating this inset or what we're considering to be an inset. I guess I could actually make this something that you can inset. So you can sort of magnetize in and out. I'll have to think about that. 
But either way, this is going to need to change as well to match that bevel. And this is actually a slightly more complicated object because it's being created using a solidify modifier. That's how that offset face works. So I'm going to actually have to apply this. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get access to these edges. So I want those edges there. And then let's front view and try to match up that bevel. So something about there looks round, right? Yeah, much happier with that. So I do think that these there also need to come down. So let's G and Z those down to about there. And I think we need to identify where some of this space is too much. So this is a really important thing to consider here is that at the moment we've got a lot of empty space, but some of that empty space is really effective. So for example, here where we've got this curving shape, that's a really effective empty space. Same thing sort of here and all of these sections here, which are going to be on a rounded surface are going to be really good for painting when this is 3D printed. Similarly, this edge here is going to be nice. And some of these curves here are going to look really good when you start painting on them. But there's a few of them that are going to look a little bit out of place. For example, here, big flat space with nothing on it, that's not gonna look right. We're gonna have an issue with that. It's gonna look a bit weird, so we probably want to add something in there. Similarly, some of this space here and here is starting to look a little large as well with no real reason for it to be there. Now, bear in mind, this is being created so that these weapons could slot in and slot out and you would have other weapons where there might be a quad barrel version of this so we need this round space here so that i can do that in the future but for this weapon it looks a little bit funny so let's start working out what we can do here and we're going to start mirroring some of the other details that we've got so on this side coming in here we've got these inset panels that keep stepping out we might want to do something similar here to match off that. So let's just shift A, mesh, and bring in a cube and start filling around with that. So I'm just going to bring this into a similar place, so around there. And let's go into face mode. I think I'm just going to maybe extrude that out a little bit. S that on the Z axis. Extrude that back to there. And it'd be quite nice to match in with that shape. So the way we're going to do that is let's select that face there, G and Y that back. And then we want to look out for some geometry to steal. So I'm going to go into edge mode, note for this. And that's looking pretty promising. That edge there seems to match this curve. In fact, we could actually probably do that one. That's probably a good choice. So what I'm going to do is shift and D to copy that. F to create a solid face that's going to be there. So this is effectively going to be a plane, P, and then by selection. And then you'll notice that we've got this sphere that's here, if I isolate this. So we've got the bit that we want. We've also got this chunk here, and that's only because we've got modifiers copied as well. So let's get rid of those. And then I can go into face mode, E to extrude that out. And then that should perfectly work there. Let's just bring that in little bit there control and minus h to hide it and then yeah that looks pretty good i could even actually q ever scroll and slightly shrink that in so there we go and then let's mirror that to the other side so straight away we've got now something that matches the look of this with something that's inset and it also helps add to the interest of the piece without taking away too many flat spaces i don't think i want to do too much more than that and similarly here we want to we want something as well, so probably just going to add some little insets here. So I'm just going to mesh cylinder RY or RX90. Let's bring that over to here, S. And these are just going to be more sort of like aircraft style riveting, where it's slightly inset. Let's array that. Let's go to there, I think. Yep. And then from this point, if you want a little bit of a cheat of how to do inset rivets, I'm going to go into face mode there, I to insert that in, I'm going to E to extrude that in, Control and B to bevel that, scroll up, press C to clamp it, and then if I just Control and minus, you'll see we get these really cool, nice little inset style rivets. Q, ever scroll, let's just G and X that across. 
Shift and D. Let's X that across to about there, I think. Yep, and we'll do the same for those. Cool. There we go. So, yeah, I think that's probably the point I'm happy with this now. I think we've got enough detail, enough clear space, and everything else is going to be added to this later in the object that's going to be around it. So, yeah, a little bit of a meandering going through this. I hadn't actually pre-designed this, and I have said before, I actually sort of sketch as I go. So there we go. There is our sci-fi ball turret, or the sort of techniques that you could use to make something like a drone. Well done if you made it all the way through that. If you did, I'm assuming you found this quite interesting, so please do hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel for more great content. And if you want to see more like this, let me know in the comments, or if you prefer those shorter videos going through a specific technique, again, throw that in the comments. It lets me know what you want from the channel. Have a great day, guys.